Hello dear chess friends and uh, welcome to our new video. In this video I will present some classical clash between Salo Flor and uh, Milan Widmar Senior Nottingham International Masters Tournament 1936. Very important game to understand concept of backward pawn and concept of hanging pairs in the center and you will see what happened in that game. You will see how it very simple and very uh normal and healthy play Salo Flor demonstrated his high uh level technique uh, in converting so much better rook end game into full point game was played in uh, queen's gambit c4 e6 knight c3 d5 d4 knight f6 and after bishop g5 bishop e7 e3 everything is normal after castling knight f3 Knight bd7, queen c2, c5 was played by black. Okay, and now white plays c takes d. That's first step to making pawn on d5 isolated and weak. Knight d5, bishop p7, and queen e7 was chosen by Widmer. White decided to capture, and as you can see sooner or later, that d4 pawn will be exchanged for c5 pawn, where uh, black will stay with bad pawn on d5. But, of course, uh, it is not tragical to stay with uh, isolated pawn if you have enough pieces uh, to compensate that weakness with activity of that pieces. Well, simply, uh, usually in such positions, black installs knight on e4 and attacks with dark square bishop. But the point is, here two pairs of minor pieces are already gone and uh, black does not have knight on e4 black does not have bishop on dark square diagonal to attack on white king side position on the king side uh, on white castle position on the king side so after e takes d5 uh white played bishop d3 getting tempo i think here h6 looks more precise but g6 is Somehow not good. White wanted uh, maybe to attack there on the king side. G6 eliminates that chances to attack on that diagonal, but gives White impulse to play H4, H5, maybe in middle game, maybe later in the end game. H6 anyway will look more precise. After G6, D takes C, Knight takes, and castling. Bishop D4, and of course. Knight goes to central position on d4. Knight is played on its internal and the best position. Rook a c8, queen d2, a6. Black sets all pawns on light. That cannot be good strategy, but this time we can see that black wants to get control over square b6. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was afraid of knight b5 jumps. In some moment, maybe with that he just pre prepares uh, rook c7 doubling and then knight, b5, knight b5 would be not possible bishop c2 was played uh, that would would not be my advice white to move that bishop it would be bad for b black to take that bishop white wants to put bishop maybe on b3 but we can still that white should still go for doubling why not rook a c1 and after doubling rook c3 with doubling again that must be good for white position is definitely better for white bishop c2 but now on the other hand black wants to organize something on the king's side but there is nothing to organize f3 opening second rank but maybe weakening pawn on e3 bishop d7 rook f1 prophylaxis against uh, attack on e3 and black goes for prophylaxis supporting pawn on d5 Rook a d1. I definitely think white will, uh, white would, uh, do bad job by putting rooks on that two files. Simply, it is too early to attack on d5 prematurely. And, uh, maybe I would try in some moment with, uh, rook c1, bishop b3, maybe even b4 to strike first on the c file. But let's see what happened. Queen f6, bishop b3. Now we see that was white idea. Uh, however, that would be very uh, difficult for white to double that rook because queen cannot find appropriate spot. And uh, tripling on that file looks almost impossible because black has knight to disturb white pieces. Anyway, black has bishop a4. 
that must be good move generally if you have isolated pawn uh, it is not good strategy to exchange so many pieces because transferring to endgame would be in open favor but it is definitely good to exchange that light square bishop for light square bishop after bishop a4 bishop a4 knight a4 rook c1 finally white goes for controlling that c file knight c5 rook e d1 and finally after move knight b6 white played knight e2 square d4 is vacated and can be used for white with white queen or maybe rook knight itself goes to c3 or f4 to put serious pressure on pawn d5 so let's remind aron uh, so which advises isolated pawn should for uh should be first clearly uh, firmly blockade uh to evidently uh leave opponent without any counter play with possible advance and sacrifice of that or maybe exchange it and after firmly blockading it you should work on uh, transferring switching from blockade to attacking setup knight d7 black intends to transfer knight maybe to c4 but white will just prevent it with b3 and white of course goes for trading queens in end game without queens on the board that uh, weakness on d5 would be easier accessible queen takes normally knight takes and we can see after knight e5 there is b3 king f8 king f1 not king f2 of course because white will lose after this so king f1 and rook c1 simply that is evident and horrible mistake black was not forced to take this why not king e7 king d6 making king closer that was normal move and in such simple positions normal moves should be done automatically every thinking every spending time <coughs> will be probably connected with some strange imagination some strange creativity fantasy and uh, maybe will give you just some uh, maybe just will just bring you some illusion of course uh, rook c1 is uh, just an illusion black wanted to exchange some material and he went for some trick of course knight c6 his idea was after that to go for trick thinking he can easily hold that but of course there are huge problems with simple move rook c5 white forces black to take with a pawn otherwise pawn d5 would be gone and now king e2 king d3 and king d4 after rook a5 we can see that black has two weaknesses but because they are so close each to other we should count them as only one weakness accordingly to great iron so which white should play for, uh, patiently first preventing blacks uh, any action on queen side uh, i think about c5 and then to strike with expanding on the king side with idea to create second weakness for black on the king side by creating second weakness for black on the king side uh, white would be able simultaneously to attack one at weakness and then another and because of having more space and better mobility white will definitely have better communication lines let's once again remind great nimtsovich uh, thanks him for that term so um better communication lines yes side having better communication lines will easily regroup from one side to another and it really looks black would be forced in some moment to collapse how to continue black played f5 he had idea of uh, exchanging so many pawns if white goes for e4 and to prevent g4 with potential fixing that is reasonable strategy but f5 also uh will make some other weaknesses as you will see later generally i must say once again it is good strategy to exchange pawns if you play for a draw before rook b8 a3 rook a8 and e4 with his previous moves white fixed black queen side weaknesses and now he opens fifth rank for easier transferring from queen to king side black must take twice and rook a7 black must wait king f4 h6 and now it's time for white somehow to make progress 
That's why he played h4, king g4, and h5. Idea is after eliminating g6 pawn, doesn't matter if black takes or advances, black decided to advance. Now white king will get access to f5, also white rook. And first g3 with idea not rush, because black would be able after king f3 maybe to go for some counter play after that check. So for g3 there would not be checks at all. Rook a7, now king goes to e4. King d4, now black king must follow you. And now, after some, here was possible to play rook f5. There is nothing wrong with it. But white played a bit different. So king d6, king e4, rook e5. And finally, once again, white rook invades a rank. After rook e8, c5, that's desperate to try to find any counterplay on the queen side. Alas, there is nothing to find. Now if king e6 pawn falls, if king c6, check and pawn falls again. Rook h7. Now black rook protects pawn h6, king protects pawn a6, but in both cases, even now or in earlier setup, uh, black pieces are so passive and must take care about white pieces. Okay, white just in waits, rook e5, preparing rook e6, making rook fully active. Uh, there is nothing wrong with king f5, that should be winning also. But white chose another way, and after this, rook f6, black resigned. It's really difficult to find some fatal mistake, but actually, I will just go back to show you one important moment. Well, black played just primitively for a draw, exchanging all pieces, and rook c1 is, I think, fatal mistake. After that, black is in huge problems, but after knight c6, I think... Uh, his position is already hopeless because, as you can see, that endgame simply should be winning for white because black has both many weaknesses and uh, passive king and passive rook. Classical example, brilliantly uh, performed by Flor Salo, uh, who gave us so instructive example uh, how to how to convincingly and smoothly convert such huge positional advantages. I hope, dear chess friends, you can learn a few things from that example. And thanks again for watching and supporting us. See you soon with uh, new videos. Bye-bye.